Hello, welcome back to the woods and welcome back to the third part in my winter bushcraft gear series. In this video we're going to carry on that money saving theme. In this one we're going to look at clothing, how to get you the right gear for this environment in the winter but in a way that's not going to cost you an absolute fortune. So in the same way that we evaluated footwear and what it needs to protect us from, we also need to look at our clothing in the same way. What does it actually need to do? Well, it needs to keep us warm. It's also going to need to keep us dry and it's also going to need to keep the wind out. And those are the main things. So if we're going to dress correctly for a winter bushcraft environment, there's two things we need to think about. Number one, the most effective way to dress for the outdoors. Well, that's been shown time and again to be the layer system, because it's a really good way of helping to regulate our body heat by adding or taking layers of clothing away. Number two, the second thing we need to think about, well, that's the fabrics we choose to wear and if you get those right I well, ain't gonna go far wrong so the layer system consists of several layers one a base layer it's what we wear next to our skin number two our second layer is our mid layer or mid layers it's best if it's made up of lots and lots of different layers thin layers. That way in between each layer of fabric you get a layer of warm air. Also if you do happen to get wet lots and lots of thin layers dry a lot quicker than one thick layer. Your next layer well that's your outer layer and that's the one that's going to protect you from the wind, the rain and also the environment, mud, vegetation, those types of things. And your last one is your waterproof layer. It's not something you're going to be wearing all the time, but if it does chuck it down with rain, then you need something that can go over the top of everything else to help keep all that warm air and warm layers nice and dry. So now you know the most effective way to dress, you now also need to know what the best fabrics are. Choice number one is wool. We can use that as our base layer, we can use it as mid layers, it can even be used as an outer layer. It's durable, it's warm when it's wet, it can even be windproof if you want it to be. So number one choice, wool. Our second choice is polycotton or polyester cotton. And the mix we want is 65% polyester, 35% cotton. That way you get something that's densely woven, windproof, fast drying, very, very hard wearing. My final choice is fleece or fibre pile. They don't cost a whole lot, they're lightweight, they're warm and they're even warm when they're wet. They also tend not to absorb much moisture so they dry out fairly quickly if they do get wet. So all I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to run through what I actually use out in the woods in the winter clothing wise. You won't see a whole lot of designer brands. What you will see is good gear that I've used for quite a long time that I know works and I am happy to recommend it to anybody else. I'll also go through the reasons I didn't go for some of the more expensive brands. So my choice of base there, very simple, it's a merino wool t-shirt. I like merino wool, it's comfortable to wear next to your skin, it insulates well, it insulates well even when it's wet, it's fast drying, it doesn't pick up body odours, so after a, a day wearing it, it doesn't stink. And also, merino wool, because it's a natural fibre, is good to wear around fires. The downside with merino wool is it tends to be quite expensive. 
but that depends where you buy it from more of that in a minute on my lower half well I tend just to wear regular pants if it's is cold then I will chuck on probably a set of lycra shorts they're going to be underneath my trousers so no one's going to see them but the good thing with lycra is it's comfortable to wear it's non-absorbent doesn't particularly pick up moisture it's fast drying and if you've got to wear it for a long time it's less likely to chafe it's a really really good cheap solution to thermal underwear I have had merino boxing, boxy shorts but I find, found they didn't wear terribly well whether it was me just wearing them out from the inside I don't know but I didn't find they lasted particularly well if the weather gets a little bit cooler then my next layer which is technically one of my mid layers is also merino wool and I've got two of these uh, and they're a long sleeve lightweight merino top I've got one with a zip up neck and I've got one with a roll neck in use they're pretty much identical to wear they're both comfortable they've both got nice flat seams <coughs> and they have all the qualities that merino wool brings with it one is made by icebreaker and that's my one with the little zip in it the other I bought at Aldi's and Aldi's the supermarket that's the one in that wonderful aisle down the middle where they have all the special offers well look out for when they've got ski season coming up or one of their cycling events because on both those occasions they do merino wool clothing I paid £11 for my merino base layer t-shirt which is some difference to the 40 quid that I saw a smart wool one for and my <coughs> roll neck top which is no different to my icebreaker one cost me 18 pounds my icebreaker one cost me 60 pounds still get the performance you just gotta shop around a bit and think about where you're buying it from my next mid layer well it's this these little check shirts you are not a bushcrafter unless you have a check shirt and there's quite a few of them out there nowadays uh, there's the premium brand ones which are very very good quality uh, the one that buys some bushcraft makes their, their guide shirt and forest shirts are beautifully made beautifully put together ethically sound 100% wool great there's also swan dry which is the, the traditional one that everyone used to wear workmanship not so good materials they're pretty good um, there's a couple of other companies out there as well that are doing them file raven to a similarly check shirt um, which i thought was wool but upon examining the label on one the other day they're only 20 percent wool um, which seems odd as they're charging i think it's about 120 quid for them um, it's not the price tag that is the reason i, I don't use any of those I use these ones because they're thinner. The whole thing with the layer system is you have lots of thin layers. And what I found is a lot of people have too few layers in their layer system. They'll have a base layer, and then they'll have a thick woolen shirt, and then uh, a windproof or something over the top of that. I would rather go for several thin layers. They insulate better, and they dry faster if I do get wet. The bonus with these, um, I can wear this one pretty much year round even in the summer I just don't bother with a t-shirt on underneath it and the wall lets the air circulate I buy them off eBay they're technically vintage clothing and this is one is made by Pendleton there's several other brands out there but Pendleton I think are really really good really worth looking at and you can pick them up for I think I've paid anywhere between 20 quid and about 40 quid obviously now I've said this the prices will start to rocket but Pendleton light wool shirts absolutely superb and an essential part of your mid layer system now if it's quite cool I might want another layer over this before I go into my big bulky warm layers and I tend to go for another lightweight merino top. This one, I call it my bushcraft cardigan. 
It's got the full length zip, it's got a little slash chest pocket, it's got two hand warmer pockets, a long scoop back so it protects the small of my back as I'm bending forward in the winter, and it's got thumb loops on the sleeves so that it covers the back of my hands and my wrists. It's a great little item, it's very, very lightweight, and again, it came from Aldi. It's a cycling jacket, but it's made of merino wool, it's got all of the features, and I think it cost about £23, which is nothing. All of this merino stuff that I've had from Aldi's, I've had it a few years now, and it's actually been really, really good kit. And it hasn't cost the huge amount that I would expect to pay for merino wool. Last on my mid layer, it, well, it's more like my warm kit. It's if I stop and I'm starting to get cold, it's another layer I can pile on. This one tends to be a bit thicker. And I tend to go for a, a, a fleece jacket, or to, to be exact, mine's a, a wool-based fibre pile. It's made by Heli Hansen, it was an old Dutch contract one. Um, but they're good, they're hard wearing, they're cheap, they don't weigh very much, they are quite bulky, uh, but you can pull them on, pull a layer over the top of that, and they are toasty, toasty warm. So the next thing we're going to look at is our outer layer. And our outer layer comes in two parts. Upper half of our body, lower half of our body. And we'll start with the lower half, trousers. Your trousers need to be, for a winter environment, fast drying. Because even on a dry day, just kneeling down and doing the stuff that we do, your trousers tend to get wet. So they need to be fast drying. They need to be hard wearing as well, for the same reason. We spend quite a lot of time in bushcraft uh, on our knees. For that reason, as well as being hard wearing, you also want to probably be reinforced in the knee area. They also need to be windproof. We don't have a huge amount of layers on our lower half, but we've got a couple of quite big muscle groups in there, as in our sort of thigh area, which need protecting from the wind, so they need to be windproof. And they also need to be a bit of a cargo carrier as well, because I tend to put quite a lot of stuff in my pocket, so I need trousers with not necessarily big pockets, but good, useful pockets. Not too many, not too big, but the right pockets. Now, what seems to have become pretty much the standard for bushcraft, and I've been to a couple of sort of bushcraft type of events recently, and obviously I keep up to speed with what people are doing on YouTube, and everyone seems to use Fire Raven trousers with very good reason. They're very good, they're very long lasting, they're fast drying, <clears throat> they've got good pockets, they're windproof. Uh, you can proof them up with uh, their, their Greenland wax to make them extra weatherproof. They've got the reinforcement in all the right areas. They are a good bit of kit. They are also very, very expensive. My first set of File Ravens, first and only set, I bought way back in the 1980s when they first launched and it was a bit of a flop and I got them for, I think it was 15 quid out of a bargain bin in an outdoor shop. And they lasted me very well. I only threw them out a couple of years ago. So I had a good 30 years of use out of them. But the standard sort of trousers that people seem to be wearing cost about 120 quid. Now, not everyone's got 120 quid to spare. The trousers I use in the winter are pretty much identical fabric wise as the Fowl Ravens, which is a workwear fabric, it's polyester cotton mix. The ones I use are, are very lightweight, very fast drying, uh, nice and hard wearing. They're also ripstop, they've got reinforcement on the knees, they've got a cargo pocket on each side, and inside that there is a, a smaller pocket for keeping things like my glasses or a pruning saw, etc. in. Uh, and they've got a couple of deep uh, hand thigh pockets, so that's it on the pocket front. Good sensible belt loops. Pretty much everything. I could proof them in the same way as I would with, with the Far Raven ones, but these ones cost 15 quid. And they are Austrian army surplus combat trousers. They're a strange sort of grey green colour. Again, if you watch the channel quite regularly, you'll notice I wear them quite a lot. And they are a very, very good 
winter trouser. So on the upper half, we're looking for similar qualities. We're looking for something that's gonna keep the weather out a bit. It's gonna keep the wind out. It's a, a load carrier. It's fast drying and hard wearing. Again, poly cotton is, is a, a good choice for your upper body as well. We could go for more specialist fabrics. We could go for something like ventile cotton. And I like ventile cotton. It's very good at keeping the weather out. It's very lightweight. It's quite expensive uh, and in high wear areas, it's not particularly hard wearing, but it is good kit and, and I wear a Ventile smock quite a lot. The poly cotton smocks that are out there, well, there's quite a few. Again, File Raven makes some very good um, overhead smocks and full length zip smocks. But again, they are only a workwear fabric and again, they are quite expensive. If you're looking for a, a cheap poly cotton smock that's a workwear fabric that does all of those things, you can buy these very simple smocks that are hooded, that are green, that have got a, a roux type pocket on the front and you've got hand warmer pockets and you can pick them up for about 25 quid. The Far Raven equivalent is probably gonna cost you about 325, so pay your money take your choice really. Um, the Fire Raven do something called a, a number one smock and the number one smock is essentially a copy of a, a British standard issue windproof smock that's got four big patch pockets, a couple of slash pockets, uh, a big hood on it and a zip with a flap over it and it's a really really good bit of kit. It's also made from poly cotton. Yes, it's camouflage, but if you buy a, a desert camouflage one, you can, you can dye them different colors. Recently, I saw one that's been dyed uh, a, a nice sort of forest green, which looked pretty good. Uh, I know somebody else who dyes all their desert stuff bright pink, whatever floats your boat. But it's a poly cotton fabric. And the thing with the poly cotton is you can proof them up. You can put Greenland wax on, you can wash them with Nick wax, and all that will help keep the weather out. It also is fast drying. They're cheap to buy and yeah, just take your choice. Another option for your upper half is something a bit more traditional and that's your blanket type smock. When I first started doing bushcraft over here in the UK, the swan dried bush shirt came over from New Zealand and it had the hood, it's cut nice and long, lace up front, a couple of hand warmer pockets, great, great bit of kit. I've been around for a long time in New Zealand and with good reason. They're great in the outdoors, they don't mind a wet environment, they're good round fires and they're, they're toasty and warm. Since then, well, there's other manufacturers have brought ones out You've got Bison, make a very, very good one. You've also got Leicester River over in the States. Again, I like some of the features on that, it looks quite traditional. And something that doesn't look so traditional, but is made of top spec fabrics, are the weather wool shirts. And all of those are very, very good bits of kit, and I'd recommend all of them. Cost wise for the Swan Dry, I think they're probably about £140 nowadays, going right up to the Weather Wall one, uh, which will cost you over £300. All very, very good bits of kit. You could pop out and get one, or you could do what I and quite a few other people have done, and that's make your own out of a blanket. You can buy an Army Wall blanket for anywhere between about 20 and 50 quid. Um, add on a few consumables like thread for stitching it together maybe a zip maybe some lacing whatever closes you want on it you're probably looking at an extra tenner on top of that so you could for 40 to 50 pounds make your own version and a lot of people do it in fact if you go on youtube go and have a look at simon a bloke in the woods 
very good tutorial on how to make one. If that one's a bit complicated for you, then go over and look at Lonnie at Far North Bushcraft and Survival. He put together a very, very good how-to of a very simple blanket smock that is absolutely excellent. Thing we need to think about in our winter bushcraft clothing are our extremities, our head and our hands. What I do is I continue the layer system on rather than going for, for just one big item like a great big trapper hat with flaps on the ears etc I'd rather go for a couple of hats used as layers and combine that with my hood and the same is true with my hands. I go for a, a liner glove and a work glove and if it's really cold a big set of duffel mittens with an insulating duffel liner and then over the outside a weatherproof layer. Again, shop around. These can be quite expensive items. I tend to go for something that's cheap. This is a Carrymore Carter cap, which they're a sort of generic, styled after a, an army type cap. They're made from cotton or poly cotton. You can wax them, which is what I tend to do with these. I just get a bit of wax dressing, paint it on with a brush, and then go over it with a hairdryer, and that helps to keep the weather out. And that's my, my weather barrier. It's got a good stiff peak, which I can turn my head down to keep the rain out of my face or the snow out of my face. And I combine this with a, a, a woolen hat. I tend to go for wool rather than acrylic, just because I find it more comfortable and it insulates better. And that can be worn either on its own, which cold mornings in the woods, quite often I'll just chuck a, a woolly hat on rather than this one. Or if it's really cold or really wet, I can combine the two. I can roll the woolly hat down so it covers my ears and the nape of my neck and then pull this hat on over the top. And what that does is it helps to keep the, the wet and the moisture out of the insulating properties of the wool. On my hands, I don't tend to spend a lot of money, but I still get the performance. I use small Mericlon gloves. I think they range in price from about £3.50 up to a fiver. They're great. They insulate well when wet. They're a good contact glove, so if, if the weather's really, really cold and you don't want to be touching metal, they're a great item to have. They're thin enough that you can still get the use of your fingers for quite fine work, <clears throat> but they still keep your hands nice and warm. One little change I made with mine was a Again, something I saw Maud Kahansky do, which is I trimmed the top off my index finger and my thumb so I can hold a pen or a pencil. It also allows me to operate a screen uh, on a, a device like a mobile phone. Over the top of that, well, just a set of work gloves. Again, you don't have to spend a huge amount of money. You can pop down the garden centre, get a set of gloves for a tenner, or go on eBay and get a good set of leather ones for a similar sort of price. If the weather's really cold, then I've got mittens, but I didn't pay 60, 70, 80 pounds for them. I've got some ones that I made. I had some leftover blanket from my blanket smock, a bit of Ventile and a bit of Cordura, again, leftover from a project. If you again look back in my videos, there is a, a how to make your own winter duffel mittens. And they're cheap to do, cheap to put together and very, very effective. So that's my little guide to winter bushcraft gear. Stuff that's not gonna cost you an arm and a leg. I quickly totted up what I'd spent on gear and mine came to 221 pounds-ish. And that included my Gore-Tex suit, my wool smock, a windproof smock, my mid layers, my base layer, my trousers, all of the bits that we talked about, hats, gloves, all of that lot and that was bought from a mixture of eBay vintage stuff surplus stuff but it's all stuff that works I then costed out the equivalent if I was to go for some of the the brands that are out there I didn't go for the most expensive I just went for the ones that I seem to see people using the most so I didn't go for the weather wall smock because I felt that was a bit expensive. I went for the Swan Drive because that was the, the lower end one. For a basic set without Gore-Tex waterproofs, you were looking at about 900 quid. 
if you add some Gore-Tex waterproofs into there, if you go for the, the Rona Recon ones, that's another 900 quid on top. That doubles it, 1,800 pounds to my 220 pounds. What can I say? Now, some people would say, well, yeah, but it's reassuringly expensive. Other people might say, it's a bloody good marketing ploy. Others might say, well, is it a case of the emperor's new clothes? That, ladies and gentlemen, I leave up to you. But I know what I've done and I know what works. So that's the guide to clothing and footwear done. Hopefully it's going to leave you enough time to get all your gear sorted out before the winter arrives and that's why I've done it quite so early to give you the time to get yourself sorted before the winter hits. It's not the end of the series however. I've still got one to do on your loadout, the actual gear that you're going to take, how you're going to pack it, what you're going to put it in. So look out for that one, that's coming up soon. In the box, description box underneath, I'll put links to some of the videos that I referenced. Uh, my one about making the, the mitts, uh, there's one on there about a, wool, a woolen blanket coat as well. Have a look at those, see if it inspires you to get out there, give it a go at making some of this kit yourself. It's a good way to go, it saves you money and it makes it all the more personal. Also in there, you'll find a link to my Instagram page and also my Etsy shop. Go and have a look at the Etsy shop. There's a few bits on there at the moment, including the Greencraft patch. Get yourself one of those, stick it on your smock or your Bergen and show your support for the channel. You can always follow me over on Facebook, just look up Greencraft and you can always drop me an email. And again, my email address will be in the description box below. If you enjoyed this video, then remember hit that like button. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. I think that is everything. I've been Neil, and until next time, stay safe.